Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 131, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. And I know I'm sounding a little out of it. I'm still not completely out of the woods yet with whatever the heck's going on with me, but that's all right. I'm sure I'll be fine. We'll just power through this. Let's get right to it. This one's called Questions About Next Steps. Hello, Mark Sargent. I have only recently been introduced to the evidence of the Earth being flat, and I had a few questions that I was wondering if you, if you or the community has considered. I've been thinking about what we can overcome the status quo of teaching the Earth as being a globe in schools and bring in the flat Earth model. It seems to me that if we found out what they're hiding about the dome or Antarctica, we could bring more people out of the rhetoric of a round Earth. How can we prove what they're trying to hide from the people? Have you considered leading a mission to the edge of the world to expose whatever is being hidden? If not, why not? What steps can we take to expose them? Once again, I haven't quite come up to date on all the proofs of the flat earth so i've if i've overlooked something please let me know i don't know who i can talk to in person about this thank you jenny uh first off jenny get to a meetup as fast as you can i don't know where you are uh if you don't know where the meetups have been so far i've created a playlist on my channel called flat earth meetups since 2016 we've had them and there's a whole bunch just about in every part of the country and overseas so that's the first thing as far as proofs boy you get a lot of homework to do there's been a lot of stuff that we've done from long distance photography to laser experiments to level experiments to moon temperature experiments take a break there's lots of stuff out there to look at uh look at that stuff first before you think about charging the ice in antarctica next up is Owen Benjamin on InfoWars. Hey, Mark, I know you're not a huge fan of Alex Jones, but you got to give, give him credit to have Owen to host Monday's show on InfoWars at 2 p.m. Central. Today on March 11th, Owen played a hilarious science skit making fun of your hero, Bill Nye. Just kidding. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking forward to that fateful day. You both have an interview, perhaps also along with Patricia Steer. He's taking phone calls now if you get this message in time so you can call him Best Nick. Yep, uh, although uh, uh, Owen Benjamin is having problems because shortly after that email was sent, he was demonetized for making a lot of anti-Semitic jokes. Again, I, I don't know why comedians try to see how far they can push it uh, when they know there's certain lines you do not cross and being anti-Semitic is one of them. I mean, Eric Dubay he's the first guy that comes to mind his channel has been not just demonetized but torn down twice by youtube uh and yet he still persists so a lesson to be learned there this one's called hey uh mark how are you, how are you man got your email from your youtube channel hope that was okay yeah that's what it's there for I'm a flat earth believer out here in Cape Town, South Africa. I saw your documentary, and if I'm being very honest, it didn't make you guys look good at all. I was hoping for more evidence and some what proof of your research over the years of being a flat earth believer. Nevertheless, keep spreading the word, and hopefully one day we will know for sure and the truth will come out. Take care, bro. And that's from Nate. Yeah. What he's talking about is behind the curve. The documentary that's on all major platforms and now Netflix at least three weeks ago. And it's been, well, about a month ago now. It's kind of a big deal. This one's called Vacuum as an Insulator. Mark, I majored astronomy first degree earned as questions I asked were never truly answered. Just two, for example. One, vacuum of space next to a pressurized atmosphere of Earth. Theory of gravity, no answer. Two, heat from the sun felt like millions of miles away in the near total vacuum of space. Uh, what is vacuum insulated from physics? Uh, Physorg.com, with its complete lack of atoms, a vacuum is often considered to be the best known insulator. For this reason, vacuums are regularly used to reduce heat transfer, such as the lining of a thermos, to keep beverages hot or cold. And that's from 2009. Yeah. Good point. This one's called Terry Keith Heiler. Hey, Mark, I had what I thought to be was an FE friend on my Facebook. 
I notice he's definitely not, but keep him as a friend for entertainment, but I get frustrated with his crap. He is looking for two people to debate. Thought I would share this with you. I listen to your shows weekly through YouTube. Here is the conversation below from today on my Facebook. Thanks, Keith. P.S. I wore a NASA t-shirt as a joke. Here's my list of flat earthers uh, that ran away from me when I've asked them to either debate with me on my Facebook wall or live on YouTube debate. Okay, so is he writing this uh, from him? From this... Terry guy. Anyway, he lists a whole bunch of flat earthers that supposedly ran away from him, although I'm not one of them, which is interesting. Um, also, he, I'm not going to read all the names. Uh, interesting email. I'm not exactly sure where he's going with this. If someone wants to clue me in, by all means, shoot me another email. This one's called The Real World. Hey, Mark, my name is Nick, and I'm actually very intrigued by the flat earth debate. I know you most likely don't think it's a debate considering you've already won the argument. But I'd like to know your reasoning behind the most popular claim out there. The Earth is flat, so if you could just write back an email about how and why you think this way, I'd love to read it. Thank you, Nick. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. There's wait, I don't even know where to start. I've got 1,500 Flat Earth videos, at least, at this point. Probably more. I don't even know how many I've got. So I should probably look that up. This one's called Comedian Hassan Minhaj Mentions Flat Earth in his Netflix series. Check out the clip from Netflix, Patriot Act, with Hassar, Hass, Hassan? Yeah, Hassan Minhaj, Volume 2, Episode 5, Hip Hop and, st and Streaming, released March 10th, 2019. Cool. All right. I will, I will check it out. Again, w Flat Earth, because it's such a prominent topic out there, is going to seep into uh, mainstream writing of entertainment. This is called F.E., Hello, Mark. This subject has intrigued me for quite some time now, and something struck me about the eclipses. This is strictly just a theory and my personal opinion, but I thought I would broach the subject with you since you do have such a large following. The saying, as above, so below, got me thinking about a few different things. The main one being the Fibonacci sequence. Everything on this plane is based on the sequence, including your DNA. What if the plane is one giant Fibonacci sequence with repeated fractals from the tiniest seashell to our plane of existence and interconnected in a giant DNA spiral? From there, I was driven to near madness with the idea that the moon and the sun are actually hands of a clock following this sequence. This would in turn explain eclipses. The one hand of the clock eclipses the other. It makes total sense in my mind, but the mathematics behind this theory eludes me at the moment. Hence this email. With such a knowledge crew at your disposal, maybe this is a topic for discussion, observation, and exploration. If, uh, I'm sorry, it would explain so much, including how the Mayans could be so exact with their astronomical calculations if the Fibonacci sequence was in fact their tool of measurement. The North Pole could be the beginning point of the sequence with 360 degrees, being the minutes, days, or years in the clock. December 21 in 2012 could the beginning of an era or uptick on the Yugi cycle, which again is the shape of DNA and truth being revealed. I could go on and on about this idea, but I'm sure you get the picture. I hope this missive finds you smiling, and I'm looking forward to your reply. Yours truly, Lisa from Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah, you might be onto something there. Uh, I, you're not the first person to suggest it, but it's not it's not suggested often. So cool. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up to a few people. Uh, it's, it's definitely something to think about. I mean, I've thought about uh, the Mandelbrot uh, uh, resolution, which is, uh, you know, could display systems be adjust, could be tailored to level of detail by the observer to where it gets more and more detail as the observer gets better and better optics. Something I came up with a few years ago. Uh, this one's called, I have a question. Mark, I became a 9-11 truther in 2004 when it was suggested to me to buy a friend and I, of course, wait a minute, suggested to me by a friend, and I, of course, refused to believe it at first, but upon many weeks of research, I was convinced the three buildings would have been impossible to suddenly free fall on their own and had to be staged like a movie. I happened to run into a family friend at a funeral that year who still teaches at Harvard and taught in 2004 as well, American history, English, and black history and has written several books about Lincoln and Douglas. I asked him at the funeral because he was one of the smartest people I've ever met, and I knew he would give me a straight answer, so I asked him right out of the blue. Is it true that Dick Cheney orchestrated 9-11? He looked deep into my eyes and softly answered yes. 
and I remember my stomach felt like it got punched again. That's how it feels when you wake up to the truth about what the power structure is doing to our world and to humanity. Anyway, I like to tell that story as a preface in being open to all their conspiracies out there because Flat Earth was the one I dodged for a long time because I thought it must be some kind of CIA operation to distract from real conspiracies. But that same friend from 2004 brought up Flat Earth to me all these years later. And at first I said, no way. That one I didn't believe at all. But he convinced me to look at it anyway. It took several days to understand the basics and several weeks to finally get me to understand the breadth of Flat Earth before I truly considered myself a Flat Earther. I know it must be a simple answer to an obvious question, and I've come across it before, but I've lost the answer and it's been bothering me. If a plane, if a plane, an air, airplane, uh, his nose would need to keep steering downward in order to retain an altitude flying over a globe, how does it not need to keep veering to the right or left when traveling west or east over a flat earth. It, because the it's going to be much more gradual uh, where you're going left to east, uh, east to west. Actually, it should be identical, actually. No, no, it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. It's, it's depending on where you are. On, but on a flat earth, you are going to be making a very, very slow right-hand turn or left-hand turn, but that's different because you're not, because it has nothing to do with altitude. So you're not going to feel it nearly as much. Uh, we've got a real keen sense of movement, human beings do. Um, sorry, anyway, uh, I really appreciate all of your video interviews and the subject. I was confusing Globe and Flat Earth there for a second. Uh, all, of your, uh, all of your videos, interviews on the subject and that you give out your contact info. And I look forward to your answer. You can just email me back or you can read it on the air and use my first name. All the best and keep on flattening on. That's from Rachel. Yeah, uh, short version, Rachel. Uh, you're not going to notice it. A uh, very, 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 very slow right hand or left hand turn. You're not going to. You're not going to notice dipping down or up in altitude on a plane every five, ten miles. You're definitely going to pick up. That's why. This one's called Question for Flat Earth. Hey, Mark. I have a question that no one has been able to give me a good answer from the Flat Earth community. People usually just change the subject and start pointing at other unrelated Flat Earth arguments or say that I'm committing logical fallacies in my question. Ah, why people say that? It, it doesn't matter. Not actually saying how I'm committing logical fallacies. The term just bugs me. It's like, just say lies. <laughs> You're lying in your argument. That's basically what a logical fallacy is. Uh, this is really frustrating to me, and I thought if anyone give me a good answer, you could. Okay. Anyway, I found this cool site where you can look up the sunrise and sunset times on a given day in any given place on December 22nd. Rio Grande, Argentina sees a little over 17 hours of sunlight. Same day, Perth, Australia sees a little over 14 hours of sunlight. Now on a flat earth, these locations are about as far apart as they could be. If the sun is small and local, how can the sun shine so long on both locations on the same day? Uh, I'm not going to read all the different, ver she's got different versions of this question. Um, uh, I've heard several people suggest that the sun's light is spread better along the perimeter of the firmament for a moment, but I think even if that were possible, it would not explain why the sun itself is visible in both places. I, th I can think of several scenarios that would allow for this phenomena. One, the times and the dates on the website I found are incorrect. Uh, this seems unlikely because I checked it against my own location. The sunrise and set sunset times were spot on. Unfortunately, I don't know anyone in those locations. Uh, I mentioned to verify, and unfortunately, I got blocked from Flat Earth Group, so I'm thinking people in it would prove difficult. Uh, two, there are two sons. <coughs> um, yeah, even before I read the third one, that's what I would go with. There's multiple light sources, have to be. Uh, or the sun is instanced, uh, which is also possible. Why not? Because the reason why you can get away with that is because, again, we do it in simulations, is because you can't, the, the one great, I should say, one of the great things about hum a human being, or the limitations, I should say, is that you can only be in one place at one time. So since you can't be in both these locations, and even now with high, high tech, you're not even going to think about it. It's You just get away with putting multiple light sources. Who's going to know? It works. Uh, three, either, either Argentina or Australia does not exist, whatever. And, and four, the sun and earth work, work together as a globe model depicts. Uh, so is there a flat earth map which has these things can be reconciled uh you don't need to change the map all you have to do is change the light sources there you go not not too difficult and again we've been doing this in our own simulations for the better part of 20 years not difficult i'm um, sorry you've been thrown out of, of flat earth groups uh but i'm sure you didn't say just that and 
you know, keep trying to disprove Flat Earth if you can. Uh, Lord knows I'd love you if you could, you know, disprove it. But everybody starts out hating Flat Earth and everybody gets sucked in like the little Brea tar pits. Uh, let's see here. That is a hotel thing for the uh, New Zealand conference, which I'm going to. This one is called The Earth. Mark, from what I understand, you believe that Antarctica circles the rest of the Earth as the barrier wall between us and the outside. Why has nobody found the wall to the outside yet? Because it's thousands of miles inland. That's why. It's not just the Antarctic coastline. It's a common misconception, but of course other people think that we live on a disk that's flying through space and there's cosmic waterfalls because they saw a couple uh, images of that. Uh, based on what you think, if I go far enough in any direction, I will run into Antarctica. True. Uh, with that being said, why haven't people picked a spot and just gone until they hit Antarctica or circle the globe? Uh, because one, every navigation system right now is linked to GPS and GPS is going to tell you where to go. Uh, if the earth is flat, why can't I see all the way across the sea? If I'm standing next to it, why do things sink into the horizon? They don't sink. You're looking through atmospheric distortion. You're looking through atmospheric lensing. But more importantly, you're looking through the atmosphere, which is just a thin version of water. Look it up. You're, what you're breathe, ask yourself this, and I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here with a lot of people. What You've heard me say it before. What are you breathing right now? The average person on the street, I mean 99% of the people on the street have no idea what they're breathing in right now. In fact, if, if gun to their head, they're probably going to say oxygen, and they could not be more wrong. It is way, way different, but you're basically just breathing in a thin version of water, and that will change... Uh, the perspective on everything that you're looking at. Uh, let's see, does the fact we are making a push both back to space make you nervous? No, everybody, every president since Reagan has said we're going back to the moon. And I think the last three presidents have said that we're going to Mars. Uh, they just say they're going to do it. There's no push. Uh, j just because Trump said Space Force doesn't mean Space Force is actually going to happen. Do you know how problematic it would be to create an entirely new branch of the armed forces. The other armed forces, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, would never allow it. The recruiting would be so, it's already difficult enough for these for those five groups. So you're going to add a sixth? Yeah. Tell me how you're going to, with what budget also? You know how much money it costs to create a brand new armed force? And if, on top of all that, what would they be doing that's different? Sorry. Uh, have you thought about the consequences if you are wrong? Yes, I have. You have already and continue... Oh, here we go. It's, it's kind of a troll email by the end. You have already and continue to undo thousands of years of science. No, actually more like 500 years. And research. And you could be proven wrong very soon with commercial flights to space getting closer and closer. Yeah, by who? Um, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, uh, and what was the other one? Blue Blue Horizon? Uh-huh. Yeah. They've been selling tickets now for 15 years. Nobody's gone. When they go into the moon... Nobody's going. Neil, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, Elon Musk said in 2017, uh, I remember I was living in Canada and I heard him say, oh yeah, we're going to we're gonna send two tourists around the moon in, by 2018. It's now 2019. That trip is not going to happen. And uh, the question is, why did he even talk about it in the first place? It's space reinforcement. That's all it is. Uh, let's see. When the sun rises, why does it only affect roughly half the world at a time? I see the last email. If the Earth was truly on one plane, then when the sun came up, the whole world would experience day at the same time. Well, yeah, if the sun was really, really huge, which is not. It's really, really small. And you know who sent me? He didn't even sign his real name. He signed it Pythagoras. <laughs> it's funny. It's good. Look, if you're going to troll me, at least you use your real name. Otherwise, you are just a coward. Although, I, would, I wouldn't even call you a troll if you used your real name. I would just call you some guy. Uh, let's see. This one's called Helium Gas in the Airplane Wings Y. There's a video on YouTube, and it is called, one second, Jet Fuel Hoax at Logan Airport with Jason Magard. And it's called, uh, the, the channel is Enslaved by No Media. He's got 45,000 subs, and it's scoring, oh, it's four to one. It's not bad, just, just about 80%. Hmm, cool. I'll have to check it out. This one's called Flying West from California to Australia. Hi, Mark. I've been researching the Flat Earth concept for two weeks now, and I find it fascinating. You and Marty Leeds have me 80% convinced, but I'm not there yet. My nephew made a good point against it yesterday. If the Earth is flat, then how, how or why do planes fly west from California and go to Australia? 
I'm sure this point has come up before. If so, give me your response. Thanks, Pamela. Uh, yeah, Pamela, you got to take the flat earth map in front of you and then go from California to Australia. And then again, remember that the compass is not going to be that much different, but look at the route. Look at the route, how they're going, and then compare it to a globe map and tell me what you see. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You'll get there. This one's called Existence. Mark, big fan of the movement, as well as a believer in FE, and I believe it to be clear, the why, to deny the existence of God. Makes perfect sense to me is why they would cover that up. I plan to attend the FE convention in Dallas this year. Perhaps I'll get to meet you. Have a good one, sir. Best regards, Dylan. Yeah, I will be doing the conference in Dallas. Look forward to it. This one's called Netflix Pokes Fun at Behind the Curve. Flat Earther is on Twitter. And the story, yeah, Jason sent me this. Thank you, Jason. And the story says, Netflix pokes fun at Behind the Curve. Flat Earther is on Twitter. Uh, and basically, it was the Netflix group out of, you know, because Netflix is really, really big now. Netflix in, in UK and Ireland, they said an official statement regarding the shape of the Earth. And in very, very small letters, it's round. And they even used the wrong term. But yeah, thank you for that. And that was just, they were just hyping up their own thing because it's getting a lot of traction uh, traction on Netflix. And so they decided to give it even more traction by creating more controversy. Uh, this one's called Flatter Theory. Dear Mr. Sergeant, my name is Isabella Gale Whiskey. Recently, I watched the Flat Earth documentary on Netflix. I found it interesting. Before I watched the documentary, I thought the Flat Earth movement was stupid and, and everyone in it was idiots. But now I don't think you guys are stupid, but rather geniuses. On the documentary, there was something about flight paths in the Southern Hemisphere. Could you clarify what that means for me? Also, I'm going to be doing an essay on why the Earth is flat. Where should I start my research? Thank you very much, Isabella. And I will write her back and I will say, uh, look at the clues first, hopefully. And that's where she should start her research. And that is also where she could answer that question about the flight paths. Because a lot of people just watch the documentary and they just wrote me. And they, they didn't actually watch the clues. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Videos. Hello, Mark. I watched all your Flat Earth Clues videos. Your exploration and presentation on the subject is, I believe, painstakingly careful and true. I have sent your videos to some of my friends. I have attached an essay I wrote on the subject you might be interested in reading. Within the scope of your study on the subject, you will have already considered most of what I have written, but there might be a few things that are new to you. I wrote it to hand to people who might not take the time to look up something on the internet. By the way, you may have already noticed what YouTube has done to hide opinion other than their narrative of things. Very difficult to find FE videos now. See attached document from their website. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They're fighting us. Oh, because we're in a war and all things are fair in love and war. Not sure about the love part, but whatever. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, how I sign up for the Flat Earth 2019 conference? And I wrote it, and that's from Plushy. And I said, uh, you got to tell me, you got to be more specific than that. Which conference are you talking about? Because right now there are, on top of the LOA one we already did, there's one in New Zealand. Calgary, UK, Mount Shasta, Amsterdam, Dallas, uh, and then kind of an obscure one in um, Stockholm, Sweden. All right, this one's called, hello from Georgia. Hi, Mark. Congrats on the Netflix documentary. I was quite entertained. I went from the documentary to your Flat Earth Clues video, which I also found entertaining. I am unclear about a few topics, however, namely the idea that you cannot access the interior of Antarctica. As you suggested, I did my own research and discovered that people do frequently make civilian expectations all the way to the South Pole, and there are no military hurdles to jump. Yeah, that's because they tell you where the South Pole is. You're, you're making an assumption that the South Pole, which was designated by the military, is the actual South Pole. Sorry. Furthermore, I personally know someone who's been at, to Antarctica, yeah, to view an eclipse, and she made no mention of an extensive military presence. They're not going to be just lining up at the border. Lastly, isn't Antarctica largely uninhabited because it is uninhabitable? I have no idea what that question means. Uh, conditions seem absolutely miserable. What with the hundred, negative 100 degree temperatures and 200 mile an hour, 200 mile an hour winds? Uh, the evidence seems to point uh, to occupation of Antarctica being unfeasible instead of it being discouraged to cover up an ice wall. Please advise on this. you got to watch the clues again. 
meaning the United States military and all the other nations were fully prepared to set up shop there. And then they pulled out. Why? At least publicly. Also, it seems like Wikipedia is only saying the USGS used that as a month equidistant projection as part of its National Atlas website, which was like a precursor to Google Earth. And to my eyes, that makes sense for that type of project because it was only focused on North America and North America is very proportional to that map projection. As for Al Biruni, Wikipedia shows that he believed in a globe Earth and demonstrated a way to measure its radius and circumference. Thank you for turning me on to him, by the way. It's a fascinating figure, and I'm afraid the reason we don't normally hear about him is probably good old-fashioned racism and white supremacy. Anyway, I'm into the third... Oh, he's only done three clues? I'm only into the third of the clues video, so I'll probably have more questions. I'm sure you've already been swamped with correspondence since your rise to Netflix fame, but if you happen to see this, read it and respond. I'll be sincerely grateful. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, Stephanie's got a long way to go, but thank you for that. This one's called, Hi Mark, do you have contact info for Rob Skiba? Please forward, thanks. And uh, yeah, Rob is difficult to get a hold of sometimes. Uh, I have a couple of his email addresses, but I can't guarantee that he will, he will write back because he is super, super busy. This one's called The 1%. Greetings, Mark. I've followed the topic of Flat Earth for several years and seriously entertained the notion for a while. However, I decided that the spherical geocentric model made more sense to me. I guess that places me into the 1% group who leave. Nevertheless, although I do not believe the Earth is flat, I cannot return the heliocentric model, which claims our world is flying through space in five different directions. Flat Earth has definitely challenged me to rethink what I was taught in school about the universe and how it works. Moreover, the FE community boasts better content than, yes, better content than do geocentric proponents. I know you guys are also geocentric, just as senators are also congressmen. Keep up the research and stay geocentric. Regards, Jeff. Please excuse any typos. Um... Yeah, he's absolutely right. And that is because we post better content than the Globe model does. Uh, nerds are, you know, they're so arrogant, they don't post anything. They just assume that everyone's going to buy it. And they don't anymore. This one's called, Owen takes a funny jab at scientism and the science guy. Mark, it's okay to read this on air. You may find this interesting. He doesn't go into flat earth. There is a definite jab against scientism in this segment where Owen hosts InfoWars. You can watch from about 15 minutes, 30 seconds to 23 minutes. In this video is called Owen Benjamin Guest Host InfoWars March 11th, 2019. Yep, very, very cool. Thank you, Jack. This one's called The Other Side of the Almond. Mark, how have you been, my friend? That's from Shane. Uh, I've been well, more or less. I, I've been a little under the weather as of, as of late, but everything is going great. Getting ready for the conferences. Uh, the next one I'm going to be going to is New Zealand at the end of April. I'll actually be flying on my birthday. Uh, it will be unusual for me. I literally be in the air the entire day of my birthday. How's that for weird? This one's called Focalt Pendulum. Mark, please explain the Focalt Pendulum mechanical device that shows the Earth's rotation. Serious and wanting to know, Tom. Uh, that's a great question, Tom, and I will throw it right back at you and say, tell me how the globe explains it in 60 seconds. The reason why I don't care about the Foucault pendulum at all is because even the scientific explanation of it, I mean mainstream, uh, the, the general public do not understand. They have no freaking idea how it means because most people are not three-dimensional thinkers. The reason why, the biggest reason why Flat Earth has gotten so much traction and it just keeps growing and growing is because the arguments we put out there are simple. I could try to explain the focal pendulum. It, honestly, it works for for me. It works about the same way that it does on a globe. Is there some gravitational force that's underneath it? Some molecular magnet that's rotating, that's doing something down there, that's helping it move? Yeah, maybe. Uh, is that any really different than what the globe's saying? Not that much. So it's a push for me. I don't I don't care about the focal pendulum because the average person has never heard of it. And they couldn't, even if you could, you could spend an hour with them like, trying to explain it, they're not going to get it. Again, which is why the clues included no math. This one's called, How Did You Hear About Flat Earth? Hi, Mark. My name is Joe, and I'm a student in the UK. I'm doing a project now on how individuals' beliefs 
uh, can interact with each other and how social media can spread ideas. Part of this project includes a discussion of Flat Earth Movement, and I'm currently trying to trace the history of it. From what I have seen, Samuel Robotham laid the foundations of today's movement in the 19th century, but having trouble linking the various Zetetic Flat Earth societies that continue this work through the 20th century with today's internet-based communities. Yeah, it's because there's a huge disconnect. Um, basically, nothing happened until about 2014. I mean, yeah, there was a couple guys who were doing a few things, but they weren't resonating. And then at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, which is what I like to call Flat Earth 2.0, that's when Flat Earth jumped into social media and just started destroying it. Uh, as you were, one, and by that I mean crushing it, as you were one of the earliest people to start researching and promoting this idea line, online, I was wondering were you the, where you first heard about it. Uh, Eric Dubé, oh, here we go. Eric Dubé claimed, <laughs> Dubé, Eric Dubé claims that he is behind the resurgence of the movement, but I find this hard to believe. Likewise, Matt Moland of the NASA channel uploaded the Flat Earth videos on YouTube way back in 2011, but the movement only really took off around 2015. Do you have any idea of how the community suddenly was able to grow so fast? Best wishes and thank you for your time, Joe. Did I write Joe back? No, I did not. And I'm going to have to write him and let him know. This is why I read emails. So I don't miss, I mean, I scan emails, but I really need to sit down and when I read them, it's like, oh, okay, that's what he meant to say. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Mark, I was wondering if you could get me a copy of the Survival Guide you wrote. I heard you mentioned it on The Secret Show a bunch and wanted to check it out. Thanks, Cat. Yep. If anyone wants, wants Survival Guide, called Empty Shelves. It's only about two megs. It's in a PDF file. I will send it to you for free. All you have to do is email me and say, I want the Survival Guide. And I will just shoot off a digital copy to you right then and there, and you'll have it. I highly suggest, though, that you print it out if you get a chance. This one's called Tickets. Hey, Mark, my name is Mihai, and for almost two years now, I've convinced it's flat. I live in Calgary, and I'm happy to see you'll be here for the Flat Earth Truth Conference. Just wanted to say I love your work, and I've followed you on YouTube for a long time. I'll be there for sure to shake your hand and say thank you for your search of truth. I'm not sure where I can purchase tickets for me and my family. Check the link under the last video. Couldn't find it. Please help. Best regards, Mihai. Yeah, I, hopefully you guys will know where it is. It's the Flyer Truth Conference, Calgary. It should be up there. Um, if you can't find it for whatever reason, let me know. Uh, but it's definitely out there. Shouldn't be too difficult, I don't, I don't think. This one's called Flat Earth Cruise. Mark, this is Forrest. I'm still trying to get some information about the 2020 cruise. If you don't have it, can you point me in the right direction? I want to know the following about the cruise. Proposed dates, including the total time, commitment, number of possible passengers, cost per person, as well as when tickets will be available, and the proposed route, including beginning and end locations with stops along the way, if any. Is it open to the public, or do I need to become a member of an organization? Thank you, Forrest. No, you don't need to become a member of anything. Uh, all you have to do is... Um, uh, you know what? Contact Robbie Davidson directly. His email address is icelebratetruth at gmail.com. And that's also from his YouTube channel. And his, his email, all his contacts info is on his YouTube channel. He's the one that do, that's doing it. Um, uh, his YouTube channel is called I Celebrate Truth. Next up, this one's called Flat Earth Computer Games. Hey, Mark, hope you're well. Have you ever played the Civilization series of games? No, I have not. Uh, it's been one of my favorite games since I played the very first version way back in the 90s. Yeah, I know. The fact that you're saying way back in the 90s worries me. I think it's up to version 6 now. What I would really love is for the developers to implement a flat earth model map rather than the rectangular map that they have used forever. They did try to wrap the map around a globe, one of the earlier versions in the game, uh, Civilization 4, I think. Similar to how Google Maps operates, it's flat until you zoom out enough and then all of a sudden it turns into a ball. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's what all developers do, which is, it's look, it, it's so much easier to program a flat surface. So much easier. I mean, exponentially easier. Trying to trying, trying to create a curve on any sort of simulation is just a pain in the ass because yeah, it, it affects everything, literally everything. Uh, so, and since the average person is never going to know, then why would you do it? Uh, anyways, I know you're an avid gamer. I just want to see if you could do a shout out, uh, in the hopes that someone at Y2 Games might hear it. And who knows, maybe there'll be a flat earth model expansion pack for the next release of civilization. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, maybe. This one's called Malaysian flight 370, the whistleblower. Mark, my name is Jeff Martin. I'm a huge fan of yours. I continually rely on your documentary to change minds. Don't be disappointed when I say I'm not completely sold on the flat earth yet. I have found comfort resting 
right in the middle of both sides, my point being this. Uh, most scientists today believe we live in a hologram. Yeah, I do too. He's saying that, not me, but I do too. Uh, it's the only theory that answers all questions with no gaping holes. A hologram is projected from a two-dimensional flat surface. The projection can take on any 3D shape desired. Also true. It's an illusion. In fact, much evidence points to a 2D flat Earth, but the projection tells a different story. I maintain both sides are right. If a documentary could be made about holograms, flat Earth, various projections, meaning projections as in maps from the USGS, hmm, there's that word again, those projections can take any form desired by the authority. We all are all right, but the problem can be viewed from many different angles. If we could see through these projections of a globe world, we may find a common ground. What a breakthrough that would be. Now then, the missing flight Malaysian 370. 60 Minutes has a very compelling documentary. This aircraft was lost on purpose. The captain was very knowledgeable, knowledgeable having flight simulators at home. Then Captain Sully landed an Airbus on the Hudson. The Malaysian captain finally knows it can be done. There is no GPS in the Southern Hemisphere, which is why there's no surprise when the captain turned west with no signature on radar. While over two countries and no one seemed to care, this is because it's routine to shut everything off an hour after takeoff, right? All evidence leads to the captain who put the crew and passengers to sleep by decompre decompressing the cabin or never, you know, you know, this was a movie plot, right? This was from the, um, I know life imitates art, art imitates life. Um, the movie plot was uh, The Langoliers, a Stephen King book. But uh, I don't even get into it. Look it up if you get a chance. It's not a bad book. The, let's see here. He decompressed the cabin, then he efficiently flew the plane out of gas and controlled the aircraft an additional 88 miles further than rescuers expected simply by gliding up and down to keep the aircraft as long as possible. There was no chance of being found, and the captain knew it. He couldn't risk being called crazy. He needed to prove it, and he needed to sink the plane intact, and I'm thinking uh, exposing the flat earth model for what it is, the truth. This was a seasoned pilot who needed to end it like Captain Sully. I believe they only ever found a flapper on, which was all the proof. I don't like 60 Minutes Mainstream, but they really did a great job on the story. Mark, you're a very, very intelligent man. You're a hero. I don't know about all that. And you inspire me to ask the questions. If this story makes any kind of sense, I would love to partner up with you and bring this theory to the world. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Sincerely, Jeffrey Martin, uh, United States Air Force. Interesting. I, I like the story. I mean, I, I think it's very, very interesting, uh, but it's also something that uh, really you should watch the Langoliers if you get a chance because you'll you'll get a lot out of that. Uh, where they actually uh, did, did um, that wasn't even a time travel, it was like interdimensional travel, but it's a whole nother thing, where Stephen King kind of kind of delved into uh, this place being some sort of hologram that uh, disintegrates after we leave, after we go through it. It's just empty. The people are gone, the, the land remains, and it disintegrates. It's, it's fascinating. And they're chewed up by these um, deletion programs called the Lang they, they call them the Langoliers. Oh, this one's called Real Mark. My name is David. I just watched you on Netflix. Is this the Real Mark Sergeant? LOL. That's from David Allen. Yep, it's really me. As opposed to the fake me. Don't know who that would be, though. This one's called David Rumsey Historical Map Collection. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to send you a link to this website with the oldest, biggest, as they claim, world map, which appears to be a planisphere. Sorry for bothering you if you were aware of it already. Best regards, sincerely, Tomas. And uh, yeah, the largest early world map, Monty's 10 foot planisphere of 1587. So check it out if you get a chance. It's on davidrumsey.com. This one's called Forward, the short URL for the Flat Earth Conference and Banner. And sure enough, here's the banner. It's not linked. It's for the Flat Earth. So Mount Shasta's inaugural Flat Earth Conference 2019, September 22nd. And all the contact info, if you get it, check that out. If you get a chance, I don't know if the, the, um, the banner, the banner is not linked yet, but it's going to be, it's going to be out there real, real soon if it's not already. And I will be attending that in September. Mount Shasta. I have not been there in a long time. This one's called Proof of Impact with the Dome. Hello, Mark. My name is Marty, and I am loving all the content you put out, and I couldn't agree with you more. I am a diehard watcher of your very professional and well-sourced videos. I just wanted to mention that I noticed in the beginning of the Flat Earth Clues, Director's Cut was just about seven minutes in. You mentioned about finding out there would be telemetry data showing impact with the dome. 
if NASA didn't keep private space agencies away in the beginning of the forming of NASA. But I want to point out that I noticed the Go Fast rocket did have an impact with what seems to be a water based in the footage. Yeah, I know. I've seen where it's spinning and spinning and all of a sudden it stops as if it had an impact with what surely seems to be water and falls back to Earth. I mean, how can anyone who's been who's seen that footage deny that? Are you familiar with the footage? Yes, I am. I am wondering if there's any telemetry data that was recorded on that flight, because if there is, then there's the second form of proof that there is a dome of some type of waters above and go along with the video evidence. I mean, anyone watching that short video can possibly deny the rocket was stopped short by something that truly does appear to be water. Even Neil Tyson himself couldn't deny that unless he claims that the video is not authentic and claims it's just CGI. Or, again, you wouldn't necessarily... I'm not saying that you couldn't fake it. I'm saying that uh, all you have to do is slow down the footage. You know, do sort of a slow-mo thing at the end. Maybe. Uh, slow the camera way, way down and make it seem... I think you could do it. I mean, if I was going to fake it, that's what I'd do. Uh, another example would be Crow 777's footage of the lunar wave, which again appears to show evidence visually of some sort of liquid way up there. There is really no way to tell how high that was in Crow 777's footage. But in the Go Fast rocket, I believe it was something like 73 miles or up, which is a little bit higher than the Carmen line, if I'm not mistaken. Let me know what you think about that or have you given it a thought at all prior to this email. Hey, Mark, thanks in advance, Marty. Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen it and it's, it's helped the community in some ways because it's a great visual. Do I think it's absolutely authentic? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it might be. Uh, again, it's kind of a push because there's some people say, well, no, it's fake. I mean, do I think it's a CGI rocket? No. No, I don't. Uh, I think the footage is real. The question is, when they got to the end where it really, really slowed down, did it slow down because it hit a soft barrier? Or did it slow down because of camera editing? Because there's so much power in editing, as people that were in the documentary know. This one's called Flat Earth Assignment. Hi, Mark. I hope you are well. My name is... Esme, and I'm a university student who lives in Sydney, Australia. One of the classes I'm taking this semester focuses on the idea of what makes people mad, bad, or sad based on our society and civilization, the world that governs us. Our assignment is to look into a community that is socially deviant. Ooh. I want to know if you would be willing to talk to me in regards to the community of Flat Earthers. The assignment is not the focus on the globe Earth versus Flat Earth, but, but the, rather the community of Flat Earthers. I understand you're busy, unlikely to respond to this email. I'm well aware that you are a big name within community, but any time or correspondence you could give me would be greatly appreciated with regards S.M.A. Mitchell. Did I write this guy back? Yeah, I did. I did. I said, hey, happy to talk with you about it. Just let me know. Can't remember if I've actually talked to him, though. This one's called The One Flaw. Mr. Sergeant, it has come to my attention that there is one flaw in your theory of our Earth's reality. Okay. I have found that if you go to a high enough altitude, you can see the curvature of the horizon, thus voiding your idea of reality. Could you verify the facts, pl facts place in your theory? Thanks, Joe Wapunga. And uh, I could, yeah, anyone that wants, I mean, you could look it up online. There's tons of videos out there. I'll, anyone that says they can see the curvature from a high enough altitude, I'll send them a video of um, s several videos of uh, weather balloon footage at 120,000 feet, which show no curvature at all. This one's called Hello Mark. Hello Mark, thanks for the call. Uh, the other, uh, call the other about coming on our show heaven with vita oh right on dash radio hosted by vita uh guerra g-u-e-r-r-a a uh, well-known celebrity with over three million social media followers her ig stories get over one million impressions a week uh yeah i'm gonna be on her show so thank you for the producer that reached out to me and that's not gonna be for a while i'm not going on that show until uh another nine days but yeah, looking forward to that, and I will post it as soon as I get it. This one's called MSG Sphere Excava Excavation Begins Near Las Vegas Tr Strip. And what they're doing is they're going to build a globe, like one of the biggest globes, uh, at least the biggest one in the United States. They're building it in Vegas, of course, and they're, they're starting the um, construction of it. Talk about your globe reinforcement. This one's called F.E. Calgary. Hi, Mark. I cannot find the website to purchase tickets for the upcoming Flat Earth Calgary in May 2019. How do I go about getting tickets? Thanks, Michelle. And I already wrote her back. This one's called Hi, Mark. 
uh, please aim a high-powered laser at Seattle, Washington to, and see if it's true you are right. Thanks. That's from Concerned Veteran out of Boston. Uh, so aim a high-powered laser at Seattle from here. Might be might be tricky. I'd have to buy a military-grade laser. I mean, yeah, if I was up on a hill, I suppose I could. Hit, hit, uh, hit Seattle from here, I suppose. I don't think air traffic control would be a big fan of it, but that's not, it's not a terrible idea. I may have to look into that. This one's called the Grand Tour Firmament. Hi, Mark, on the latest edition of the Grand Tour. James May mentions the firmament. 51 minutes, 10 seconds in. Yet again, clues to the flat earth. Kind regards, Adam from the UK. Thanks, Adam. Much appreciated. This one's called Watch NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine Address Moon to Mars Plans Fiscal Year 2020 Budget. Oh, boy. Uh, hi, Mark. Check out the latest plans from your friends at the agency. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Uh, the science fiction is going to blow your mind. Either that or you're going to explode from trying to hold on to the laughter. They do, n they do have a new, young, and charming administrator that can charm the hell out of the brainwashed individuals sitting on the sidelines. A new look for a new generation of morons. Two things. Why, if you are organizing events, don't do them in their face? I mean, in Houston, Washington, D.C., or even the Cape itself... It's time to decide what is more feasible to prove, either the fake moon landing or the FE. I think there's a lot more certainty proving the first or something fake linked to the program, simply because without the first, the second does not exist in my opinion. Therefore, you may have to change your course of action and strictly go for the uh, fake moon landing all the way. I like the fact, by the way, that he abbreviates fake moon landing into FML, because that's an acronym. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens after Logan Doc. Oh, that's right. Logan Paul's Doc airs in two days. <laughs> That'll be fun. And where the focus going to concentrate in debunking. But like I told you before, all this small experiments that are being tried are just provoking consternation and anxiety or confusion along with the community. So it's time to either go big or stop repeating the same old routine. <coughs> Best wishes. And he doesn't sign it. Come on, if you're going to make a statement like that, you really should sign it. This one's called The World Cage. Sergeant, you're a card, are you not? A YouTube posting using animals in a big but restricted game reserve who accepts their confinement willingly with no intellectual or physical challenge to leave it is put out by you. Yeah, that's true. It's part of the clues. He also spelt my name wrong. It's S-A-R-G-E-N-T, not A-N-T. Um... You, the same person who refuses to go to the civilian non-restricted and waiting South Pole cost of about 15,000 American, provided, he also put in pounds, which means he's British, uh, provided by a number of independent travel firms. You, who won't back up your no Southern Hemisphere flights assertion by going and, and proving it, recorded and witnessed, which means he didn't ever watch Clue 9. Uh, you, who won't take the MiG jet flight in Germany that offers a trip to 80,000 feet plus, depending on conditions and guarantees you your money back if you're unable to take you high enough where the Earth's curvature is undeniably visible from the 360-degree view cockpit. Wow, that's really interesting because uh, that's only 80,000 feet. And we've got weather balloons at 120,000 feet with show no curve. You, who won't commission a ship to sail the full length of the ice wall and take over 2,000 photos. Why does it have to be 2,000 photos? To demonstrate that each and every shot is of a different section. Oh, why does it have to be 2,000, though? Why, why not just take video? Why, why do we have to take photos? Crowdfunding from the Disciples of Flat Earth could easily overcome any excuses on expense. Sergeant, again spelled wrong, this up I don't predict, this I foretell, this up this up i don't that doesn't matter within 10 years you're going to have to cope with the huge ignominy piss taking yeah definitely british and americans don't say that uh, embarrassment and humiliation of the collapse of fe which as well as the money you have advocated uh-huh as a self-esteem self-aggrandizement project emotionally you are going to have problems i already have problems uh, 10 years from now i don't even know if i'll be alive uh, most people can see a train coming. You evidently can't. And he does not sign it. However, his email address says Michael Gordon. And so what can I tell you there? I, hey, you know what? I'm going to read troll emails. It's so nice to actually get somebody that attacks every once in a while. So if you write me a troll email, I'm probably going to read it. 
This one's called Flat Earth Domains, flatearth.com. Hi, Mark. I'm a flat earther since December of 2015. In February 2016, I bought five domains with flatearth.com on it. Do you know someone that might be interested in partnering up? Email me. Love your work, man. I'm a Portuguese living in Nazar, Portugal. Oh, it's, that's town in Portugal. Land of the biggest waves in the world. A lot of flat ocean, but I lived... Really? Portugal's got the biggest waves in the world? But I lived six years in Toronto. During that time, I came across your stuff two weeks after. You know the rest. Thanks for your time. Daniel Perez. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants uh, the d domains, I don't really want them, but uh, you can email him at danielcpires at gmail.com. This one's called Hi Mark. Mark, please give me a call at your earliest convenience. I have some other evidence that will prove what God said. We don't live on a sphere. I have many more I would like to share with you, and they go far beyond what was in your documentary and all the videos. That's from Philip. Please call me at least to say shut up. <laughs> That's awesome, but uh, no cliffhangers. You're going to tell me something, tell me something. Don't say, I'll tell you if you email me one time. I mean, I may email you anyway. And if your email stuff is, is interesting, I'll probably call you. Um, this one's called Behind the Curve Proves Flat Earthers Are Actually Good Scientists. And it is an article of the same name from digitalspy.com. And actually, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer are listed in it. So very cool. That, thank you. That's from Jason. Thank you for that. This one's called From Steve in New York City. Mark, I've always wondered about the mystery of the blue sky color. I'd like to see a continuous video of it during a launch as approaching space in order to show how at upper altitude it indeed turns to black as the experts say it does. Also, since the sky is undoubtedly blue, then why are all the stars and planets not appearing blue as well? Lastly, since NASA tells us that there are literally tens of thousands of satellites flying around the Earth, then why are we not swamped here on the ground below with endless shadows from these alleged satellites? Yes, I'm believing more and more in staged reality as so-called science is failing big time. Take care, Steve. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's find a fun one to ask, end on. Uh, this one's called Flatters Community Barstool Sports. Hi, Mark. My name is Caroline. I work at the talent department of Barstool Sports. Our top podcast, part my take, is looking to interview a flat earther. It'd be fun and cue to. It would be a fun Q and A featuring two uninformed people wanting to learn more. I am reaching out to see if you would be able to connect us with a flat earther local in New York City. Who is able to come to our studios for a potential interview? And let's see, our partner will uh, deliver the loudest and most correct sports takes in the history of spoken word, so on and so on. Okay, so what I did was I put her in touch with DITRH, who's out in that area, and he said, absolutely, I would. And then right after, he said they, 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 were, they scheduled something, they backed out, and they said they were going in another direction with it. Like right after they booked him, without even talking to him. So how weird is that? I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't. So keep an eye out for Barstool Sports and, and if they put out anything in the next week or so. But of course, we got to deal with the Logan Paul thing first, and that's in two days from right now. This one's called, Hi, Mark. Hope you're good, bud. Hey, mate. Just confirming that the book arrived with you, bro. If you can, let me know when it'd be possible. It'd be great. That's from Tony White. And yeah, he sent me a book, big hardcover. It is called, I'm staring at it right now, it's called One Consciousness, The True Message of the Mandela Effect Reality. Uh, it's an instruction manual, simulation of consciousness. There's a lot of stuff on here. Easy to read edition. Uh, I have not looked at it yet, but it's pretty big. Uh, so if you want, want to check it out. But there's definitely a whole bunch of Flat Earth references and virtual reality references in it. So very cool, Tony. And I, I will check it out if I get a chance. Sorry, my voice is starting to cave in and I've got a high school tomorrow at 4 30 in the morning why 4 30 you ask because they're calling from the east coast which means it's 7 30 so they'll be talking from 7 30 to 8 30 and I'll be talking from 4 30 to 5 30 okay let's oh, okay you know what we're gonna end on a troll email perfect this is great I'm really excited about this one okay so we're ending on a troll email and you'll understand why in a second sometimes you get people that are filled with so much hate uh, it's just it's just wonderful to to see that sort of energy directed in a, in the wrong way. Okay, so uh, it starts out. Uh, the email is titled. Uh, I hope I hear. I hope I had back from you, you effing idiot. And of course, I'm going to leave out all the profanity. Okay, that's literally the title. 
And yes, I, I pronounced that right. It's a, he, he said, I hope I had back from you. Should be here back from you. But no, he said had. Okay. Um, <clears throat> doesn't even use my name. Your stupid ideas and ridiculous assumptions are dangerous for our youth. It's people like you that hinder progress in our society. I've never wanted to hit someone as hard as I would like to hit you. I hope one day to meet you just to slap some sense into your idiot brain. You're an effing moron. If the earth was is flat, then make your way to the edge of it and jump off and do us all a favor. Effing jackass. Which, that's the opener, right? So I, I write back. There's a little little back and forth here. So I write back and I say, because hey, it was like, you know what? Every once in a while I get an email like this. Like, okay. And so I literally wrote, eh, why not? First, proofread your letters. Even your title is wrong. Second, you don't have to worry about the youth. Flat Earth already has the children. Third, threatening people over the internet is a terrible idea. Better to write a letter made out of newspaper clippings. Give it, it a menacing feel. Lastly, sign your emails Christian. Otherwise, it just comes off as cowardly. Hugs and kisses, Mark Sargent. Because I, I can see by his email, it's uh, a guy named Christian Procell. P-R-O-C-E-L. L or I? I don't know. My eyes. I need freaking glasses. Okay, so he writes back and I didn't respond after this, right? Uh, a minor typo by autocorrect doesn't change the fact that you got that I got my point across. You you're yet to prove without a doubt that the Earth is flat. Your sophomoric way of thinking only perpetuates the fact that you simply do this for attention. You and that washed-up excuse for a retired porn star steer, <laughs> and the rest of your pets are simply running a cult for people who don't know how to think for themselves or just want attention just like you. You should be ashamed of yourselves. The fact, all caps, is that the earth is, caps, round and has been proven time and time again for many years. Poisoning our children's minds with this nonsense is completely irresponsible, jackass. I think deep down you know this is the truth, but you're enjoying your 15 minutes. Best regards, round earther. And, and he signs it. That's that's what he signed it. Round Earth, or even though his name is Christian Procell. Uh, yeah. Again, there's nothing you can do with people like this. There's some people that their childhoods are so filled with hate and misery that they have to lash out to anybody that uh, is getting what, what should I say? The light of the stage. Uh, Fifteen minutes, please. Right. It's been a little, been a little longer than that, but. Again, I'm not in it for the fame. I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. And as far as trying to protect the children, there's... Sorry, you're too late. Flat Earth already has the children. So deal with that. Anyway, on that note, uh, let's call this one good because my voice is just about done. Uh, don't forget, you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys...